shring ka e i la ring asa ka la ring sa ka la ring sa hoin kling ring shring namaste so i'm very pleased to begin this series on the maha nirvana tantra so we just finished the series on the maha soda sakshi mantra soda sakshara means having 16 syllables so you might wonder well, what is the source of this mantra where does it come from is it an authorized part of the scriptures or did somebody just make it up you know there are a lot of instances of made up mantras there's even some mantras that claim to be the 16 syllable maha mantra but they're not <laughs> this mantra is kept very secret in the tantras it's only revealed in the tantras in fact, it's only revealed in the Agamas or Shiva Tantras. And it's given in a covered form. It's given in code. So one of the best sources, besides the Saundarya Lahari, which we already did a short series on, is the Maha Nirvana Tantra. And I was looking through this Tantra, and not only is it very beautiful and devotional, poetic and highly philosophical, but it contains uh, very detailed instructions on how to do the tantric rituals. These are called panchatattva. Panchatattva means five offerings. And the offerings are meat, fish, parched grains, uh, water, uh, wine, excuse me, wine, and the Maituna, the tantric ritual of sexual intercourse. So this is presented as the Dharma for the Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga, as anyone who reads the news every day can tell, is advancing very quickly, and so all the ills and faults of Kali Yuga are very prominent in society today. Nobody can avoid, it seems, uh, eating meat or fish. Nobody can avoid taking intoxication or having sex. That's Kali Yuga, right? So the uh, miracle or the blessing of Mahanirvana Tantra is that it takes these things and makes them into sacraments. Why does it do that? To control them, to regulate them, to limit them, so that people don't go too far and damage themselves irreparably. Uh, we had someone visit the other day who claimed to be very spiritual and was into all these Tantra things and stuff like that, and he turned out to be an alcoholic and uh, addicted to tobacco. So when, when I called him out on this, he says, well, it says it's okay in the scriptures. <laughs> no, it doesn't say it's okay to overindulge. What it does say is that uh, liquor and other intoxicating substances can be taken in small quantities after being consecrated by the proper rites. And Shiva directly says that those who do not perform these rites, but indulge in these things anyway, go to hell. So <laughs> we see that going on all around us. And now even the earth has begun to hit back against humanity for creating such terrible conditions on this planet. But so the Sodashi Mantra is hidden in concealed form within this scripture. And then there are extremely elaborate and detailed instructions for how to purify every aspect of our existence. But also embedded in those instructions are very, very high 
meditations. Let me read you one. So there's a whole bunch of other rites and then it says, he should then per perform the purification of the elements of his body. The excellent disciple should place his hands in his lap with the palms upwards, just like the Buddha's sitting posture. And fixing his mind on the Muladhara chakra, let him rouse Kundalini by uttering the Bija hum. Having so roused her, let him lead her with Prithivi. Prithivi is the element of earth. Hmm. By means of the Hangsa mantra, so hung, so hung, hung sa hos, hung sa hung sa sa hung sa hung. See? To the Svadhisthana chakra. And then let him there dissolve each one of the elements of the body by means of another of such elements. For example, let him dissolve Prithivi, earth, together with odor. Smell is the, the sensory property of earth. And also the organ of smell into water. Dissolve water and taste as also the sense of taste itself into fire. Dissolve fire and vision and form and the sense of sight itself into air. Let air and touch as also the sense of touch itself be dissolved into ether, space, akash. Dissolve ether and sound into the conscious self and the self with a capital S into Mahat, the primary or original material substance before differentiation into the elements. Dissolve Mahat into Prakriti and Prakriti herself into Brahman. Let the wise one, having thus dissolved the 24 tattvas, then think of an angry black man in the left side of the cavity of his abdomen of the size of his thumb with red beard and eyes, holding a sword and shield, with his head ever held low, the very image of all sins. Then the foremost of disciples should, thinking of the purple Vayu Bija as on his left nostril, inhale through that nostril 16 times. By this let him dry the sinful body. Next, meditating on the red bija of Agni as being situated in the navel. The body with all its sinful inclinations should be burnt up by the fire born of the bija, as also by the 64 kumbhakas. Kumbhakas are pranayama, where the gates of the body are closed by various postures, and then the air is held within for so many repetitions of a mantra or bija. Then, Thinking of the white Varuna Bija on his forehead, let him bathe the body which has been so burnt with the nectar-like water dropping from the Varuna Bija by 32 exhalations. Having thus bathed the whole body from feet to head, mentally, let him consider that a Deva body has come into being. Then, thinking of the yellow bija of the earth as situated in the Muladhar circle, let him strengthen his body by that bija and by a steadfast and winkless gaze. Placing his hand on his heart and uttering the mantra, Ang Hring Krong Hang Sa So Hang, let him infuse into his body the life of the Devi. Now, is that magic or what? See? So, in this work, the proper relation between ceremonial magic using symbolic elements and tantric magic using the very energies of the body itself are, are joined. The connections between them are given in great detail 
And yes, one has to learn uh, the terminology. <laughs> and as we're able to gradually uh, demonstrate these different practices, at least the external practices that you can see, then we'll also describe in more detail the internal practices that lead to actual realization of the tantras. Now, the addition that I'm using as a source is by Arthur Avalon, which is the nom de plume of Sir John Woodruff, a British scholar at Oxford. And he went to India and somehow or other convinced the pundit to give him at least the first part of the Maha Nirvana Tantra. The pundit refused to give him the second part because it has so many secret mantras and he didn't want it to get out. And still to this day, the second part has not been published. It's only available by initiation. So the first part actually is more than enough <laughs> to grant liberation. So we're going to be studying the first part. Now the problem with the translation is the uh, translator was not realized himself. He was not initiated into the lineage. So I'm having to go through and edit the whole thing. And for example, he writes in a preface, he gives the history of the work and all that boring stuff. And then he gives an introduction where he defines all the major terms but the problem is, <laughs> he didn't understand it. So it's basically gibberish. <laughs> it's like he just copied it out of a book, but not knowing what it meant. He didn't know when to begin and end the excerpts, or he didn't know how to connect them with the other stuff. And oh, it's just a mess. I had to throw the whole thing out. <laughs> so instead, what we're going to be doing is defining these terms as we go through the work. And uh, so far, I'm only planning to go through chapters one through five because it's really, it's pretty dense, you know, and even that's going to be a piece of work. So bear with us. The beginning is very beautiful and poetic, and it reveals the beautiful devotional relationship between Shiva and Shakti and how they, how they dance, how they play. And especially how they act for the benefit of all sentient beings by giving this great knowledge, this classic wisdom, which is good for all people in all times and places to help them attain ultimate liberation. Aum Tatsat, Aum Harihi, Aum Buddha Sarnai.